This is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University. Talk about CE 3303 solids. We're uh, reviewing exam number three. We've got a shear flow and fastener problem. What we've got here is a T beam, a steel T beam composed of two plates welded together with an intermittent weld. We've got the uh, dimensions of the plates and then we say that each weld group, that means a weld on either side of the web, can support a shear force of 9.25 kilonewtons. Furthermore, we tell you that the steel allowable shear stress is 35 megapascals. And then we give you, give you some section properties. The moment of inertia is 1.786 10 to the sixth meter, 10 to the minus six meters to the fourth. As you know, I like to work in millimeters, so I converted it to that by multiplying it by 10 to the 12th to get it in millimeters. Q max is 2889, 10 to the minus 6 meters cubed, so I multiply by 10 to the 9th to convert it into millimeters cubed. QW, Q at the web, is equal to 26.25, 10 to the minus 6, so I convert it into millimeters, 26.25, 10 to the 3rd millimeters cubed. First part was to determine all this was constant for both versions of the test, the blue and the green. Um, we, this was the same for both tests. We wanted to determine the maximum shear the beam can support. That's going to be based on the allowable shear force, shear stress, excuse me, in the steel, 35 megapascals. The formula is tau max is equal to VQ over IT or tau, any tau equals to that. The maximum shear stress is at the neutral axis. So I've kind of sketched that in for you. So I rearrange this equation and I get the maximum shear is equal to the allowable shear stress times I times T divided by Q max for that shape. So plugging in the numbers, I have allowable shear stress, 35 megapascals, which is newtons per millimeter squared. I have I given here in millimeters to the fourth. The thickness at the place where I'm taking the shear stress, which is right there on the neutral axis, which the thickness of that is the thickness of the web, 20 millimeters. Divided by Q max, which was given to me is this 28.89, 10 to the third. Do the numbers, I get 43,270 newtons, which I convert to kilonewtons, and that was the answer, 43.3. Uh, second question on that page was determine the maximum well spacing to the nearest 0 0.005 meters, or really 5 millimeters, to not exceed the well capacity. Okay, from my equation sheet, I was given these two equations for shear flow, little q. Little q is equal to the V the shear force per the, of each nail or fastener divided by the spacing S and it's also equal to VQ over I. So I can rearrange this equation and I can get that the spacing S is equal to the V per nail or in this case weld group times I divided by V the shear force on the section divided by Q. And the Q we must note is at the point of the weld where the weld is uh, occurring and that is at the web where the web attaches to the flange. So for the blue test I was given that the shear force is 30 kilonewtons and so plug it into this rearranged equation for the spacing I get 9.25 kilonewtons per weld group and we made it clear that the weld group was a pair of welds, two welds on each side of the web. Anyway, times I, 1.786, and that's in millimeters to the fourth, divided by the shear force on the section, 30 kilonewtons, divided by the Q at the web, this value. And so, look, checking my units, I have kilonewtons on the top, kilonewtons on the bottom, so that cancels out. I'm just going to get a millimeters to the fourth divided by millimeters, millimeters to the third. I'm going to get my answer in millimeters, 20.98 millimeters. Okay, if I, if I increase that spacing to the next nearest five millimeters, or 0.005 meters, 
I'm going to way exceed the capacity of the well, so I've got to reduce that spacing. If I space them further apart, they can take uh, less shear force, or a given shear force will uh, exceed that well capacity of 9.25. So anyway, so I have to reduce it to the next the lower, lower number, 20 millimeters or 0.02 meters. The green test I was given the shear is 25 kilonewtons. Plugging those numbers into the formula, I get 25.17 millimeters. Once again, I have to reduce that to the nearest 5 millimeter point, which is 25 millimeters or 0.025 meters.